Boss Boss Racing. Hey everybody. Um, this video is going to be outlining how I overlay my uh, data from my AIM Solo 2DL over my uh, GoPro footage and my uh, in-car footage. Um, a lot of you have been asking how I do that and uh, since I dropped my, um, my overlay packs on my website, I decided maybe this is a good time to show you guys exactly the, the different ways that you can do this. There's the way that I do it, which is combining both the uh, gauges overlay on top of uh, my GoPro video, and I do this all in a program called DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna walk you guys through everything, so let's go. So this is DaVinci Resolve. Um, this is a really good program that you can download for free. So you can go on their website, and I'm gonna link it in the description below. Uh, but basically, this is DaVinci Resolve 18. It's a very powerful uh, editing software. Uh, it's also extremely powerful for color grading. A lot of uh, big post houses use DaVinci Resolve um, for theatrical and commercial work and music videos and all that stuff. So this is a really powerful product. And uh, look, it's free. You could obviously buy the Resolve Studio, which is $295, and it allows you to uh, export, I think, 4K footage. I use the Resolve Studio, by the way. Uh, so the stuff that I have, you might not have, but for the most part, everything that we're gonna do today uh, will be possible with the free version. So go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve 18. Uh, so the purpose of this video isn't to show you how to use DaVinci Resolve. Um, you could use any editing software that you want and if you want to learn how to use DaVinci Resolve or any other editing softwares, there are so many good videos on YouTube to teach you how. Um, this one, I'm just gonna show you exactly how I line up my gauges to my, uh, my POV. So to start off with, I add all my GoPro footage to my timeline. Uh, and then I sync up my sound and all that stuff. But that's gonna be a, a time for a different video to show you how I sync up my sound to my video. Uh, for most of you who use your GoPro uh, just straight out of the box and use the audio from the GoPro, you're just gonna import your, your footage here, drag it onto the timeline, and it's uh, gonna be ready for you. So basically what I do is I put all the videos on one timeline and I sort them through uh, my sessions. So session one, session two, session three, and session four. Um, so once you've got those kind of laid out, you can now go into race render. And here we have race render. Um, I always start with a blank project and you're gonna be prompted with this screen. I totally forgot to mention that when you receive your Boss Boss Racing uh, overlays, I'm gonna have a PDF showing you exactly where to put the files for race render so that you can use them uh, in race render. Okay, so now we're gonna navigate over to the input files here on the right-hand side of the window. We're gonna click Add, and we're gonna select our session data. So here we have session one, double-click. And now this window pops up, select data template. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to the Boss Boss Racing custom templates. Uh, recently, I've been liking Time Attack 2, uh, so we're going to go ahead and select that. Then this window pops up uh, where you can actually change some of the parameters, like the speed, uh, if you're going faster than 160 miles an hour, uh, if you're on a really, really fast track, you can raise that so that uh, the gauges scale properly. Um, and likewise, the RPM, uh, you're gonna actually want to change this to your max RPMs and your red lines so your tack is accurate on your gauges. So let's go ahead and click OK. And there we go, here's our layout uh, populated. And the difference between CAN and GPS is with CAN, and it's also OBD2, you have way more data from your data logger so it picks up on things like uh, what gear you're in, um, throttle, brake, uh, steering angle, 
all that stuff, like your, your uh, temperatures. In my case, I'm using the Solo 2 DL, so I have all that data. So uh, I like seeing that data in my videos. If you have a regular Solo 2 DL, you're gonna go ahead and use the uh, GPS overlays, which uh, don't have all the things like throttle and braking, but you have GPS speed, um, your position on track, uh, you can even show like the G meter and stuff. You're gonna wanna go ahead and scrub through and make sure that everything is uh, what you're expecting and you know, there's no weird stuff. And this is what I'm talking about with uh, the CAN and OBD2 data. Uh, you're able to have things like a throttle map and a brake map. Uh, and this is all really helpful in terms of seeing where you can improve. If you are on the fence about getting a Solo 2 or a Solo 2 DL, I highly recommend if you have the capability to tap into either your OBD2 or your CAN bus, I really recommend doing the Solo 2 DL. Um, and if you have a, a choice between OBD2 and CAN bus, it's my understanding that OBD2 isn't as fast of a refresh rate for data as CAN bus. Um, someone can fact check me on that. Uh, but for my instance, I just tapped into my CAN bus and uh, have all the data at my disposal. Now that we've figured out that everything is good, and yes, this is uh, my session one, um, you're going to want to trim this down because naturally when your lap timer starts, uh, you're kind of in the pits, you're waiting in the hot pits before you're released. So there's all this dead space. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and figure out when you leave the hot pits and I'm seeing it here. You see that little uh, red dot on the map? I'm already taking off and you can see my gears are going off. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this green flag start. And then I'm gonna find out when I leave and it looks like I'm leaving right here. So I'm gonna do the red flag here. And this is basically telling the program uh, just render from the green to the red and nothing else. And that's going to save you a lot of um, space on your hard drive. And before we go any further, I want to explain what exactly I'm doing and how this is different from how you actually use this program. Because with race render, typically what you do is you have your gauges, but you're actually supposed to um, import your video to this too. I've done that in the past and it's been a really tedious um, process. It's hard to sync things up very easily. I find that these extra steps of rendering out the gauges and adding it to the video on another editing software, although that seems a little bit more convoluted, it's actually easier um, and more intuitive. Uh, here you have to use these horrible um, tools uh, to get the video and the gauges synced up. I will be attempting to do that for you guys, just in case uh, there are some of you that want to use this cursed program. Uh, but yeah, for for my use and what I'm used to, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to export this as a video, literally this screen in 4K, because uh, whether you're, you're, you're exporting in 4K or HD, the more pixels you have and you downsize, it becomes a little sharper which is good for numbers. So we're gonna export this video with a black background and we're gonna overlay it and use um, some tools on DaVinci so that it kind of shows, it, the, the black goes away and the video underneath shows through. So let's go ahead and export this. Now that we determined our beginning and our end points and all the data is good, we're gonna go to create video. Do you wanna save current project? That's up to you. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. For this case, we're gonna say no. And here, uh, you're gonna have a bunch of output profiles. Uh, I just go for custom. Uh, you want it to be 16 by nine widescreen. Uh, and for picture size and height, we're gonna go for 4K, 2160. Um, video frame rate, this kind of all depends on how you shot your GoPro. Some of you shoot 24 frames, some of you shoot 30 frames, 60 frames. If you're in Europe or Asia, uh, maybe uh, 
50 frames uh, or 25 frames, uh, I would go with whatever your camera was recorded at. For my case, I shot 24 frames on my GoPro, so I'm gonna sh select 24 frames. Audio channels, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't even have sound, uh, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna select MPEG-4 H.264. Uh, video bit rate, um, I think I kind of just like used whatever this was. If you want, yeah, go ahead and, and uh, um, copy whatever I have. I'm just gonna put 60,000 for video bit, bit rate, but also at the same time, you could just drag this sliding scale to a maximum. That means picture qu scaling quality maximum. So it's gonna be the nicest quality. Uh, and we see here that there's a specific time span and project. It starts where we have it and ends where we had it. And we're gonna hit start rendering. It's gonna prompt you to, to save somewhere. I'm just gonna, as you can see, I already exported these, but let's go ahead and say BR1. So now it's exporting. All right, so this used to trip me up a bunch when I first started using race render you actually have to press OK on this prompt that says video file creation complete. If you don't click OK, the file is like kind of wonky and it won't open. But once you click OK like this, then it finishes, I think it wraps up the file format and it makes it usable. All right, so now we go back into DaVinci Resolve. You can see that I have a bunch of my sessions here already. Um, in bins. Uh, you can watch some YouTube videos on how to create bins and how to organize all your media. But let's say you want to just drag and drop. You can open up your window, session one, dragging it over. And I want to drag it over to the side here. And the reason why I want to drag it over to the side is because it did render out with an audio, um, audio track. And if I were to put it over here, then it would just kind of overwrite it, which is uh, sucks. And now you're looking at this, you're going, uh, what the heck? There's nothing. Remember we sh rendered it at 4k and this is a 1080p timeline. So you can go into your zoom 0.5. How we are in business. We can see everything. Okay. So we're going to want to get rid of this audio track. What you can do is you right click and uh, uncheck link clips. Now, if you select the auto track again, you can delete it. And now here comes a more tedious process. Basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a place in your, uh, footage that corresponds with your overlay gauges. The way that I work the quickest is, um, I match, uh, my, first to second shift point leaving the hot pits. So I'm going to go ahead and find that point here. I'm going to show you. So we're going to go ahead and play this and it looks like I, oop, there it is. And you can use your, your arrows on your keyboard to go back, but First, second. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the frame where it, it drops into second. And on your keyboard, select your clip and hit M. And this makes like a marker that your timeline can, uh, that your timeline can kind of snap to. And now I'm gonna find the same on here on my GoPro footage. So that looks to be like second. <laughs> and, and let me just say that this isn't an exact science. You're going to find a way that works for you and you should stick to it. Um, I'm not a professional editor. I, uh, am all self-taught with editing softwares and stuff. So some of you out there might be looking at 
how I'm doing stuff and go like, oh my God, that's not the best way to do it. Uh, that's totally fine. I know that it's not the best way to do it. And I'm, I'm constantly looking for the best way to do it. So if you have a better way, please let me know. But for now, this is how I do it. Now with the two clips marked, I'm gonna go ahead and drag the overlays over my clip. And now you'll notice, uh, wait a minute, it's all black. Like how is the video supposed to show? Uh -huh. So composite over here, you have composite mode normal and you have all these other ones. You're, we're gonna select add. And what that does is it basically just combines both the layers and it gets rid of all the dark areas and it adds it on top of the layer below. Um, and now look at this. You got your you got your beautiful boss boss racing overlay gauges and it should be working properly. Keep in mind that sometimes you'll you'll think it's synced properly, but it's really not. You do have to look over it Oh, like you do have to look over it multiple times and make sure that it actually is doing the right thing. What I like to do is I like to watch the whole thing and make sure that the shift points are um, very close or exact. So for this instance, we're looking over here. And look, the, the gearing is actually a little different. Let's watch that again. So it's like a few frames off. So this is where you're gonna actually have to like move around your gauges and stuff to make sure that they match. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do that exactly. Um, you wanna move it a few frames to the left, a few frames to the right until like, you get it spot on, but that's basically how you sync everything. All right. And you can see that so now that we overlaid our gauges, uh, you can now uh, export if you can now, so now that we have our gauges all set over our video, uh, you can select, you know, the portion that you want to export. Um, of course, you know, we have all four of our sessions here, so you're gonna have to do it to each and single, every one of these. And this is how I uh, sync everything in DaVinci Resolve. Now we're gonna do race render, um, which is uh, such a pain, but just go through the pain with me. All right, so we're back in race render. I pretty much have the same window that we had open when we uh, exported, uh, but let's just go ahead and get this video in here. So same thing. We have all of our gauges. We have our, uh, our session um, data. All right, so let's go ahead and add our video. We're gonna go here to add. Let's go to where I have this saved. And boom, our video is now uh, on race render. And you can see that you know the gauges are here and we don't have to do all that stuff on DaVinci Resolve, but the real pain comes from syncing your video and your gauges here. You can see that the data is still going, but the video is uh, no longer. All right, so there's two ways that you can do this. You can either use the synchronization tool or the side-by-side um, feature. The side-by-side -side feature is pretty interesting. You'll have your video on one side and your other reference input, which will do session one. Um, and you can show uh, G-Force, track map, speed, um, and you're trying to uh, match everything up based on that. Whenever I'm trying to do this in this app, uh, this way seems a little bit harder for me to do because you're you're trying to you're trying to like sync up things that just don't 
you don't have all of your data in front of you uh, to work off of. So what I normally do is I go to the synchronization tool and um, here on the bottom, I'm gonna want to find that moment that I'm looking for. And for this, it's gonna be when I uh, leave the pits and I shift into second gear. So it's, and there are these like frame, uh, frame steps, which you can hit and you can really dial it in. So let's try to find when we shift into second gear. I think, ah, you see that? Okay, so we're gonna go forward, forward, oh, and then it bangs into second here. I'm still in drive, but it's in second. Okay, so we're gonna keep that there. On input file, we're gonna actually switch it to our, um, our data. So now you can see the data is moving, but the image is staying um, completely still. That's what we want. And check this out. Look at that. So now I'm getting close to there. So first gear, and now I'm looking to get into second gear. And you could you could um, offset the time with these uh, little uh, buttons here. So we're just gonna slowly go forward until, whoop. No, that's not it. False alarm. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go back a little bit. So that's first gear, second gear, and we're gonna go back very slightly until we bang right into second gear. Uh huh. Click, 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 click. Oop, we overshot it. Boom. One, two, bang. Okay, damn, we got it. We're gonna click okay. Now, check this out. Boom, it's synced. Um, great. Honestly, that wasn't as bad as I remember it being. Uh, <laughs> the only reason I don't do this way is because I do uh, manipulate the image and I color grade it in DaVinci Resolve and to do that, I'm gonna have to manipulate the image and and bring it into here and then um, sync it. And it's it's it sounds crazy, but it's easier the way I do it through DaVinci Resolve. But a lot of you are not gonna need to do that. And this might be the simplest way. Um, so yeah, wow. I thought that was gonna be way harder than it was supposed to be, but uh, it's perfect. Look at that. The data's uh, doing what it's supposed to do. Well, I guess that wraps it up. Um, I showed you two ways. Uh, I showed you my crazy uh, way where I export uh, the gauges only and I overlay it onto my video in DaVinci Resolve. And I showed you how to do it all in Race Render, uh, which isn't bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. And all these gauges are available on our web store at bossboss.racing. When you buy the gauges, it's gonna come with a CAN bus uh, OBD2 version and a GPS version. For those of you who either have a regular Solo 2 or are just using the telemetry from your GoPro. Um, I'm gonna consistently be updating the gauges and the overlays with new designs and uh, arrangements and if there's a specific one that you're looking for please let me know dm me or uh, comment in this video below i'm gonna do my best to make this as easy for you guys to get the best looking overlays possible um, because the stock ones on race render are not it <laughs> and these specific overlays right now uh, they're tailored to me this is what i want to see uh, but obviously I want to make stuff that you guys want and you guys want to see. So please let me know uh, what it is that you want, uh, what type of features, what type of overlay and where to position things. And I'm definitely going to implement that with designs moving forward. 
that being said, these are gonna roll out slowly. I'm gonna have 16 by nine um, overlays. Uh, I'm gonna try to make another video how to do the nine by 16 vertical for IG and TikTok. Um, those are a little bit weirder to do because race render doesn't really have that capability. So you're actually going to have to use DaVinci for those. I'm really, ex I'm really excited to see everybody with better gauges on their videos. Just how I made the boss vision mounts to, uh, create better POV videos on track for everybody. Uh, I'm trying to make this so that our gauges all look good. Um, and again, let me know what you want to see. Let me know uh, if stuff's not working for you, if, if you wish something was a little better, or if you want a certain feature. Let me know and I'll do my best to accommodate everybody. And uh, thank you again for your support with uh, Boss Boss Racing. I'm a privateer. I don't think anybody is surprised by that fact. I fund my time attack seasons out of my own pocket and I don't have any monetary sponsors yet. If you want to sponsor me, please let me know because <laughs> tires are expensive, parts are expensive. But these little products are a way for me to fund uh, this really expensive thing called motorsports. So uh, you guys buying the products and stuff, that really means a lot to me. Uh, it allows me to keep doing what, I, what I'm doing currently and I love it and I love racing, um, but really you guys are helping me out a ton. Uh, by supporting this channel, the products, Boss Boss Racing in general. So uh, thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one.